um, shall we say chaotic, is Bill's still recovering from the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race. Welcome back to Balanced Sports, a show where we like to talk about the shows and sports that we like to watch, and hopefully you do too. Today, we're going to be talking about women's basketball, specifically the WNBA and women's college sports. I'm Hunter. Let's jump into our new segment called What We're Watching. We're going to start with the WNBA. The first games of the season are underway. They're technically preseason games, and the first game of the regular season will be happening May 6th between the defending champions, Chicago Sky, and the LA Sparks. I'm always really excited for opening day. I feel like the league does a lot of things to kind of get you excited. And since we're starting with the defending champions, we should see the banner raise, maybe some rings passed out. It's always a fun way to kick off a new season celebrating the winners of last season. With some of the training camps underway, you know, if you've seen some of our past videos, we've made a couple decisions about who we think would make the roster. So come back and see some videos later where we're going to be talking about some rookies that eventually made some camps, maybe some all rookie teams and see who made those final roster spots for what is going to be a really deep competitive league. The competition um, and the roster spots are just much more challenging than they ever have been. So really excited to come back for the new season. Uh, Odyssey Sims, why aren't you on a roster yet? You probably have your favorite players too. Comment, like, subscribe below and tell us who they are. But for me, it's Odyssey Sims. I need her to succeed. I need her to get picked up on a roster. We'll see where who gives her a chance this year. It was a mess in Atlanta last year, honey. So now that we have a couple of preseason games on our belts, the first of those games was Seattle over the LA Sparks. The Storm came out to an 81 to 68 victory over LA. Not every player, of course, in these preseason games is playing this, the full amount of time, and some players are still coming back from their overseas commitment, or some are still gearing back from injuries. Stewie did not show any rest as she led the Seattle Storm with 20 points coming back from a foot injury that sidelined her the end of last season all the way through the playoffs. So it's really great to see Stewie coming back, absolutely crushing it. Joel Lloyd also finished with 18 points. And watch out this year for Ezzy Magbagora, an Australian national player. Ezzy plays for the Melbourne Boomers and they just won the Women's National Basketball League in Australia. In her first game over with Seattle, she finished with nine points and eight rebounds. And when she was with the Melbourne Boomers, Ezzy was averaging almost 15 points and eight boards for Melbourne. So be on the lookout for her to have a really successful season and especially after we've received the news that Mercedes Russell will be out for an indefinite amount of time right now with an injury. Also, someone that really stood out in that game for LA was Olivia Nelson Adodo, the rookie from UConn. She had the challenge of coming into a very packed camp in LA with some bigs on there who are incredible from Cam Beige, both the Agumake sisters, Amanda Zuibi, who I believe is still overseas, but you can see how that's a pretty full roster. And in Olivia Nelson Adodo's rookie debut, she finished with 15 points, 12 boards, 5 assists in two blocks to completely stuff the stat sheet. Jumping over to our second preseason game so far, the Atlanta Dream finished with 88 points over the Washington Mystics. 88 to 69 was the final score. And another rookie, Ryan Howard, the number one overall draft pick, finished with an incredible game. Ryan Howard shot four from eight from the field and three from five from three pointers to finish with 15 points in their, her first ever WBA debut. Christy Wallace will also be another rookie this year for Atlanta. Christy Wallace, if you remember, was a Baylor player that had spent the last couple years overseas. Now, since she was drafted a couple years ago but has not played a single game in the WBA, she still will count as a rookie. So, good thing for Atlanta, they have two rookies that scored 15 and Christy Wallace had 17 points in a very effective game for Atlanta. The Mystics were led on this game by Shatori Walker Kimbrough, finishing with 17 points. Alicia Clark and Elena Deladon are two players who were really excited to see at their full strength this year for Washington. What a deep roster they have. A team that usually think they're going to really come at you hard on offense. This is now a team that is completely stacked at the guard position on defense. I really look for them to challenge teams. It's not going to be easy games when you play Washington this year. So excited to see how Elena Deladon comes back. She's changed her running form, changed her body to be in really tip-top shape this year. Now, I'm really excited about this year. The teams are just deeper than ever. I am really nervous, and this is a part that all of us fans hate the week leading up to these final roster cuts because it's players that you've learned to love and really appreciate through their college careers, and it's just tough to make these rosters. So so our hearts go out to all these teams, these players, these GMs that have to make this decision this week. But the WMEA is just around the corner and we are super excited for the season to begin. Now, let's jump over to the women's college basketball, who's not in their season right now, but who is seeing a ton of turnover in the transfer portal. Raise your hand if you've ever been personally victimized by the transfer portal. Chantel Jennings for Just Women's Sports, an awesome web 
website that you should go check out if you're a fan of anything that's happened here. It's reported on April 12th that there were 1,143 Division I women's players in the portal. I'm sorry, let me repeat that one time. 1,143. I would not want to be held to the decisions that I made when I was an 18, 17 year old. So I am a big fan of the transfer portal, but where it starts getting a little bit, um, shall we say chaotic, is when you're a fan of these teams and you're constantly kind of looking, maybe like I am, maybe you're doing the same, at which players are gonna get picked up or where your favorite players from your teams are going. It's almost turned into like the off season or free agency for the WBA. What I like about the transfer portal is I think coaches are being really specific about who they're trying to bring into their teams. I think they want it to be great culture fits. I think that they, if they're missing a big, they're going to go after specific people who fit their style of play. So I think through the transfer portal, we're having more players and coaches really find their niche and the teams that fit them really well, but it's just also causing um, a lot of disarray, I think, around the country with so many teams now having an exodus of players, five, six, seven players leaving rosters, that it really can make your team look entirely different from one season to another. Be on the lookout this year as many different teams are super affected by the transfer portal and where some of these incredible players and some of these schools are able to find really good pairings leading up to the 2023 season. Thank you for watching today as we are gearing up for the WB season. If you're a fan of women's sports, just like we are, then next week we're going to be talking about some women's college softball. They are in a really pivotal time of their season right now, gearing up for postseason play and conference tournaments. So we're going to be filling you in on what's happening right now in softball and what you need to be looking for in the lead up to the Women's College World Series. And if you haven't caught our episode from last time, we have a lovely trivia episode where we talked about some trivia from the WMEA draft for Bound Sports. I'm Hunter. Thanks for watching. Nope, don't like that either. Absolutely not ever saying that again.